Mr. Sultan Shruvat, Mr. Johar Sarkar, Mr. Sanjay Gupta, our Special Secretary, Mr. Mathur, Ms. Amita Sarkar, ladies and gentlemen. I stand here today, of course, let me start with that, uh, on behalf of my minister. And we've had this discussion for a couple of days about the CII big summit picture, the gathering that you all, uh, gathering of minds, experts. And it's wonderful to see under this one roof, all the experts huddle together like a team, finding out ways to progress ahead from here on. You know, I couldn't help, uh, I was sitting here for such a long time, imagine things. And I thought to myself, Mr. Watts, if this was a scientific fiction movie, all of us would have been connected with some wires, and the data would have been collected somewhere else. If this was an animation, then perhaps there would have been gaming going on between the various experts here from different fields. I think this industry belongs to people who have vivid imagination, to people who know about technology, and people with big pockets. So perhaps you're looking at three important people. A technocrat, a dreamer, and a lala. All three together, with a guest appearance of the government sometimes, I think this, this industry will move ahead. Undoubtedly, uh, as I walked in, uh, Mr. Raj Jain was speaking to me that this industry depends a lot on different, different industries, the manufacturers and others. But I couldn't help imagine that of all the manufacturers and all the industries, it's all of you were always in the minds of every Indian on a, every single day. Your reach is absolutely amazing. To a large extent, you're driving our thought processes. You're driving the economy as well. And spectrum today, the content that goes through the spectrum today has become like oxygen to everyone. I am from rural India. I'm, well, Every one of us belongs to a village, I'm sure, but I, my constituency is rural as well. And on every given week, I'm with the youth there. And everybody is on WhatsApp. Everybody is on Facebook. And I'm quite surprised these days a whole lot of the rural youth are on Twitter as well. They're consuming your news, not as much via television, but also via online gadgets. There's literally a race between the way technology is changing, the way new ideas are coming, as to how fast and how farther can you all reach. So it's absolutely amazing times. I couldn't disagree with Mr. Mathur when he says these are exciting times, amazing times for all of us. Not, not just in terms of consumption, but also in terms of dissemination. I'm sure you feel that power sometimes of how you're able to dish out information. Indeed, the uh, industry has been growing fast, uh, uh, and we have we've set ourselves a, a wonderful target of a uh, hundred billion US dollars. The US is somewhere about 500 odd US dollars, million US dollars. And not surprising, it's all come through creativity and the ability to get funds from outside. 90% of their stocks are picked up from countries outside US. And so I'm not surprised that their government is always so, so happy to give them tax benefits, especially when they're able to draw out such, so much of money from outside. Digital sector is growing amazingly fast. There's a race uh, to provide online data, news, digitization is happening. The phase three and four, which should be completed by 2016. Most of us in the urban cities are reading more of online news than those on newspapers. But nevertheless, the newspaper industry still in India is on the growth curve. The rural India is still wanting to read newspapers. 
rural India, the newspapers are still to reach there. And therefore, online news, newspaper, everything is on the rise. The consumption of television is also on the rise. Different to what is happening in Europe and US, where perhaps the digital, spec digital media is, is substituting the, the television there. So these, these are times when everyone, all of you together can be growing ahead, can be moving ahead. But yes, we can invest today so that we can secure and strengthen our future. The digital advertisements are growing. Our prime minister has been very candid in saying that try and reduce the, on, the, the newspaper advertisement and start increasing the digital presence of government advertisements. You will gradually notice that the government of India is going to be increasingly present on YouTube, on Facebook, on, on all digital platforms. There's a very concerted effort towards that. And as Mr. Johar Sarkar mentioned here today, Doordarshan has a lot of channels that we're willing to lease out. We're also wanting to give our prime time slots in a way, outsource it to the industry. We want better quality material on them. We are certain when better quality material is on them, we will have uh, better revenues generated. We will also digitize the terrestrial transmission of Doordarshan. So that not only are we present via the, the satellite, via the internet, but also direct to everyone's handsets. It's also with the with the thought in mind that after and over a period of time, there would be a lot of local broadcast happening. Its own culture, its own requirements, and that's best met by a terrestrial digital broadcast. You can have every city can have its own studio and can generate its own content. We've just had our uh, auctions on radio, and Mr. Watts was congratulating me privately, so I thought I'll make it more public here, that the auctions were absolutely transparent. Uh, this is something that the government can indeed take credit for, right from uh, the spectrum to coal to radio. We, we've ensured that our auctions have been extremely transparent, and we will continue to do so. Mr. Sanjay mentioned about news. The times are changing, and therefore, with the changing times, the policies will change too, Mr. Sanjay. From phase two, when there was no news, in phase three, there is news. And I can't help but uh, remind the, rather mention to the audience here today that yesterday we were at a function and uh, the news channels were being discussed in a very lighter way. And uh, Mr. Jaitley mentioned that he spoke to one of the leading anchors and said, your catch line for your 9 p.m. broadcast of news should be two at a time. Because they're usually five at a time speaking. So we'll accept two at a time. And Piyush Pandey went on to say that it's, it should be Windows 2015. Because in your television, you have plenty of windows. And each of the windows is speaking. So with that news, one wonders if news is opened immediately on radio. We perhaps have a Windows 2015 on, news on, on radio channels as well. So with changing times, we will change. As of now, in phase three, you can broadcast all India radio news over Batam. But what we've done is we've taken off a lot of things from news. So therefore, it's become non-news. Uh, things like sports in, in a city, uh, local events in a city, uh, just that religion and political news is hardcore news. So we leave that out for the time being. The films, of course, uh, a great soft power projection for, in, for our country. And uh, we've gone ahead and had uh, cooperations with various countries, uh, UK, uh, Canada, Australia, China. And we would continue to do that. What did allows us 
is the ability to market our films much better and collect revenues from other countries uh, much easier with these film corporations treaties. Also, it allows people from these countries to come and shoot in India. We are also very actively considering uh, National Film Development Corporation to become a single window clearance for films that would like to shoot in India. Our country is very beautiful, and therefore, uh, why restrict people to come to India and shoot? We should be promoting it. There are laws between states and center which differ, but at least from the center's point of view, we will create a single window clearance. Uh, CII could be a, a very helpful partner in that. Uh, to, to provide all sorts of uh, clearances uh, from, uh, from the ministries that are, that, are the, that are there in the central government, and then encourage the states to do the same, therefore making the whole process of filmmaking much easier. We've also gone ahead, and uh, the Prime Minister has given his uh, in-principle consent to funding uh, films that go for uh, prestigious awards like Oscars or Cannes or other things. We've realized that uh, our films, like our sportsmen, our films need to win outside as well. And we have enough potential in, in our country, uh, enough talent in our country to produce good films. Perhaps what we are lacking in is uh, networking and campaigning. And uh, we need to discuss this with the industry. It's a very, perhaps one of the first uh, platforms from where I've said this. So uh, with the CII and with the industry, we need to sit and discuss as to how this could become a possibility, uh, like a national sports development fund. We, we get funds from the corporate sector and the government pumps an equal amount of money to go outside and win uh, all these prestigious movie, movie awards. I am, I'm aware of the, uh, the difference in the number of uh, theaters in, in US, uh, in China, vis-a-vis -vis India. The, but you, you all very well are aware that the real estate prices in India are also uh, incomparable to all these places. We are far higher than US and China in terms of real estate prices. So one wonders whether the movie halls are not coming up because of uh, policies of the government or because of the real estate prices. Uh, it was in 2004, I think, where uh, it, it was the NDA government that gave a tax rebate for uh, multiplexes to come up. We are willing to discuss this with the industry and take steps to strengthen uh, the movie halls, uh, perhaps have more numbers. But what the industry could do is think out of the box and think about uh, perhaps having uh, mobile theaters, uh, movie vans which go to villages, uh, smaller theaters, say about 20 to 30 people in smaller towns. The idea is to have more screens and reach out to more people. People today are willing to pay for quality cinema. So theaters and, and, and film screens will certainly work there. What I would really ask uh, the industry to step in is places like uh, the government is also wanting to set up a gaming, visual effects, uh, special effects university, uh, an, institution, an institution of excellence. And we want to do that for the special effects in the animation gaming with the help of the industry. We've been speaking about it for about six months now. Uh, we haven't had any prospective industry uh, come up and talk to us that we would like to partner. It's extremely important for us to not just invest in infrastructure, but also pool in support from the industry to provide the soft, uh, soft skills there. That's the only way to keep the standard of a university high. The 100 million youth which the India, in which India is going to add by 2025 is perhaps equal to what uh, together Africa, Asia, um, is going to add to the world. Now, with this large number of youth, it's just not about consumption of the material, of the content. It's also about becoming partners and adding to your, uh, your industry in terms of uh, skill labor, in terms of force multipliers, in terms of cre creation of uh, better software. So, Perhaps the industry starts to want, needs to think about setting up with the collaboration with the government of India institutions of excellence 
and we look forward to your support in that. As I had walked in, I was also mentioned about the GST, and I totally understand that that's, a, that's an area where the industry needs uh, the government support. We've been very candid in saying that GST needs to come, and needs to come like yesterday. We've been also trying to encourage the opposition to partner and clear the GST bill. Now, as I understand, and I've had discussions with the finance minister on this, our effort would be to subsume most of the taxes, uh, entertainment, local taxes, our effort would be that. But as you understand, it's an intensely dynamic subject, the GST itself. So the various, various subparts of the GST will also feature in, in what sort of negotiations happen and how far we are able to move ahead. But I can assure you that our intention is to strengthen the industry uh, by subsuming all taxes and making it easier for all of you. I also understand that, uh, and uh, Mr. Sanjay spoke about the 9 p.m. slot, about the news and the quality of it. Uh, uh, of the very little money in the news channels, I totally understand. And unfortunately, uh, because of that, there's not much investing, investment happening in training of the journalists, the quality of journalists, the questions, the news that is being presented. And, and we, as a growing nation, need to have especially if you call uh, the, the news as the, or the journalists as the fourth pillar of democracy, we need to have very good quality news being given out, and therefore there needs to be investment into journalists, uh, the quality of journalism it's, itself. So the, the government is, of course, uh, is talking about the, the concept of bringing in more foreign direct investment into news channels as well. Uh, can't really say that we're going to make it happen in, in a given time frame, but the very fact that we've started thinking about it means we've started moving ahead with it. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful, uh, I think, uh, a paper that emerges after two or three days of tapping your brains. Uh, let's see what the data center provides us later. But thank you so much, all of you, for hearing me out. And uh, of course, it's an honor standing in front of experts like yourself. I'm a sportsman, after all. Uh, so I hope. Uh, I'm going to learn along with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you.